Hey, this is Mark Williams of Swine Life Barbecue. Today I have two whole bone-in turkey breasts. I'm gonna show you how I do these for Thanksgiving with a simple dry brine that goes overnight in the fridge. It's gonna guarantee you not to have to worry about that old dry yellow turkey out of the oven. We're gonna do these today on the Gorilla Grills pellet grill. We're gonna set it about 300. That'll make it about a two and a half to three hour cook. Let's get started. So we have our two bone-in turkey breasts out. It doesn't take too much trimming on these. These were lucky enough they already had the backbone cut out, but if you find some that is not, what you wanna do is take your knife and go down each side of this rib cage right here, just at the lower part of the turkey breast. And you'll cut all the way through, it'll be some thin bones, it'll go right through it. You can use some good kitchen shears also. You just wanna cut right down through here, you'll roll that backbone out and cut it out of your way. We're gonna, while we're under here, we're gonna go ahead and take some of this off. That's the only bad thing about some of these bone-in turkey breasts, they have not been cleaned up really well. So just take your time. Anything you see that's not gonna be appetizing, just take off. We're gonna do the same thing to this one. See, this still has some of that thigh and leg meat on there. We're just gonna get it out of the way. Once we've got the bottom side halfway trimmed up, we're gonna flip them over and look at the top side good. We're gonna go ahead and get these smashed out flat. So you'll put your hands underneath, kind of spread it a little bit and just press down. Same thing on this one. That'll help it lay flat. It'll cook more even. Now, of course, they still have some of that neck meat on there. We're gonna get that took off as well. Now you gotta remember this skin is gonna draw up during the cook process, so you don't wanna cut it off too close to the turkey breast. We'll get these put in a full pan on a cooling rack and we'll get them ready to brine. So now that we have these two turkey breasts in this full pan, what you wanna do is take the skin from this end and walk your fingers underneath it and just gradually get ready to pull it off. It may give you a little fit. You may have to take your knife and cut the very front of it and just gradually pull the skin back. You wanna expose as much of that meat as you can. We'll do the same thing to this one. Now's a good time. If you do have anything else hanging underneath the skin, you can go ahead and get it off. Now the first step to this dry brine, what we're gonna do is add a good salt, pepper, garlic base rub. You really want that salt to work on this meat, kind of open the pores up, that way it'll take in more of these flavors. So we're gonna use our Mississippi grit. You can use just straight salt. You can use any AP on the market, anything you'd like. We're just gonna go kind of a medium coat. We ain't want to go too, too heavy. Do the same to both of them. Once you get that on, you wanna come back with your barbecue rub or a sweet element. You want the sugar to mix with the salt and actually create that good dry brine. We're using Mississippi grind. You can use any barbecue rub or any rub you'd like. I've tried it with brown sugar. It does just as well. I just wanna kinda of incorporate some of these barbecue flavors on this turkey breast. And you're gonna go a little bit heavier with this just cause that sugar's pretty mild. What this allows you to do is get all the flavors you want on that skin, but not actually being on the outside of the skin where they'll burn during the smoke process. So all you're gonna do is take your skin, pull it directly back over that turkey breast, pull it as tight as you can, and you're gonna to wanna to tuck it in. Do the same thing to this one. Now I remember this one here, this skin here come up a little bit short, so we're gonna to try to make up for it now. If it ain't perfect right now, we can always adjust it once we get it on the pit. Once you get the skin wrapped back up, just simply take a paper towel and you wanna dry it off best you can. This is gonna help that skin get a little bit crispier, pull all the moisture out of it while it's in the fridge overnight. We're gonna put this in the fridge. It needs to go eight or 10 hours at least. It's not gonna to hurt to go a little bit longer. While it's in that refrigerator, that fan in that refrigerator can move plenty of cold air across the skin. It's gonna help dry it out and get it tightened back up. We'll get these out in the morning, let them start coming up temp while we get the pit fired up and we'll be ready to put these babies on. So to make this injection, you wanna brown one stick of butter. Once you get it to that beautiful golden color, go ahead and add the second stick to cool it off. Now it's time to add your quarter cup of hot sauce 32 ounces of chicken broth, a tablespoon of AP, and of course, a quarter cup of your favorite barbecue rub. Let this simmer for about 20 minutes, let them flavors mingle, and it'll be good to go. So today we're gonna to be cooking on the Grilla Grill Silverback. So let's get it fired up. We're gonna simply hit the start button, gonna bump the temp down to 300, and I'm gonna go ahead and add some pellets. Now I have cherry pellets already in here. I'm gonna top them with some hickory, and we'll get them mixed up a little bit in the hopper. Should be a good balance in flavor and then we'll let it come up to temp. Before we get these birds injected and the rub put on the outside, I wanna go over kind of what we did last night with the dry brine. Of course, we trimmed them up, made them look pretty, got the skin put off, and we applied a salt-based and a sugar-based rub to them. That's basically your perfect mixture for brine. They stayed in the fridge for about 10 to 12 hours. We got them out just a few minutes ago just to let them start coming up to room temp, and we're ready to put injection in. So we have our injection. I've got it out of the fridge as well. It's come up to room temp. We got a cheap store-bought injector. We're gonna get these babies injected. So you want these turkey breasts to be good and cold when you're injecting. So what'll happen is, as you pull the injection needle out, that butter should coagulate 
and keep all your injection from running out. To me, it seems to work pretty good the colder these turkey breasts are when you do this. And it's gonna take probably this full 32 ounces to do both of these whole turkey breasts. You wanna make sure to get good coverage, that way your injection's spread out nice and even. And this injection's very mild, so it's not gonna overpower these turkey breasts whatsoever. I'm gonna go ahead and finish injecting these and we'll be ready to apply the rub to the outside. So now that we got these turkey breasts injected, I'm gonna go ahead and get them ready to season. So I'm gonna cook them on this cooling rack I have in this pan just to make them easy to handle. But I'm gonna make sure the skin's tucked under good. Do the same to both of them. You know, we pulled it pretty tight last night. We just wanna make sure we do all we can to make sure it stays put. So now what I'm gonna do, a little bit of this butter from this injection has leaked out. I'm gonna use it as my binder. Just kind of rub that butter around on the skin. It'll help with that golden brown color. And then we're gonna apply just a light coat of rub to the outside just to add a touch of color. This is a salt based rub, so any kind of AP again or just regular table salt will be fine. Next, we're gonna add our barbecue rub. Again, we're just going super light with this. All your flavors under the skin, this is only to add color. And last but not least, we got just some non stick cooking oil. I'm just gonna give them a light spray. This just happened to be a buttered flavor spray, but we're gonna do this throughout the cook process just to aid in helping get that skin extra crispy and golden brown. Let's get them on the pit. So the silver batch come right up to temp. Let's get these birds on. So like I said, I'm gonna leave them on this cooling rack and get them placed right center. We're not gonna worry about sticking a probe in them now. I know they got a long ways to go. We'll get the lid shut. And we'll come back here in about an hour, give them a spray, and get a pro put in them. These birds have been on an hour. Let's give them a look. Get out of the sun. You can tell they got good color, starting to get that golden brown. We're gonna go ahead and give them a pretty good spray. And then I'm gonna take the time now to go ahead and get the probes in both of these. You just wanna go into kind of the deepest part of that breast. They're both sitting at about 105, so we know we got a good ways to go. We'll keep an eye on them, get the lid closed. So both these turkeys hit 160. We're gonna go ahead and get them off. We're pulling at 160. We know it's gonna carry over to the safe zone 165. We'll still have plenty of moisture packed in these turkey breasts. We're gonna get them in here, sit them on the counter for a little bit, let them rest for about 20 to 30 minutes before we slice into them. So we brought these turkey breasts in and let them rest for about 30 minutes. Just as a quick recap, we started off with two bone-in whole turkey breasts. We used a dry brine method overnight injected them, got them on that pellet grill for about two and a half hours. They hit 160, we pulled them off. We know they carried over to 165. I'm excited to cut one of these open and see that moisture. So let's check it out. So there's a thousand ways to carve a turkey. What I usually try to do is cut that breast off as one whole piece. And it is packed full of moisture. That way you can lay that breast out just like that and cut it across the grain just like you would a steak or anything else. So what I'm gonna do, skin feels good and tender. Now on turkey, I do highly recommend cutting your slices a little bit thicker. That way once they set out while everybody's eating, it'll hold the moisture in, it'll be a better bite for your guest. So I'm gonna have to get one of these right out of the middle. And you can see that dude is just packed full of moisture. That butter stayed in there. Once it got up temp, of course that butter melted. All it had to do was add flavor. Skin looks good and tender. Let's see what this turkey breast is all about. That turkey breast has great texture. You can taste all the flavors of the injection, plus that brine really adds a little bit of saltiness element to this breast that really complements it. You show up to a party or you're get together with a turkey breast this juicy, you're gonna knock everybody down. Perfect texture, got a great flavor, great spice. This ought to be your go-to this Thanksgiving. That's a wrap for us today at Swine Life. We appreciate y'all checking this video out. If y'all got any questions, shoot us a message on Facebook or Instagram. And as always, like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see y'all next time.